Hello and welcome to Longfleet at Home. I'm Susie and I'm the pastor of Longfleet Baptist Church here in Poole and this is our church online. I've taken advantage of a moment of sunshine to come to one of our favourite spots. This is just out at Sandbanks overlooking the Sandbanks Ferry. So I'll just spin you round. Have a look at that. Actually, I'll hold you up a little bit. You can get better view. If you look right over there, I think that's probably the Isle of Wight over there. And then spinning round, you can see old Harry Rocks. And there's the Sandbanks Ferry coming along on its chain over to Purbeck. Oh, fabulous. So we love coming here. I love just sitting watching the ferry. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's just, it's just so a busy little thing, isn't it? It just does its own thing. Quite predictable. It can't go anywhere else. It is stuck to that chain. Uh, the chain keeps it on course. We've seen it when um, the water's really quite rough, when the sea's really quite rough, and it's sort of pitching about a bit but it stays on course because it's there on its chain. It is very predictable. You couldn't just suddenly say, oh, I think I'll take the ferry to some other place because it wouldn't go there. It's on its chain. And that just got me thinking today about predictability and security. What are you like for um, always wanting to know what's going to happen next? I came across um, a quotation today. Hang on, let's just get that up. By a lady called Macrina uh, Wiedeker. And it said, it is enough to pray one's questions and rest quietly in the possibilities. My life is too small for all the answers. And my life has been plagued with the need for too much certainty. That really got me thinking. Have you ever um, experienced that, where your life has been plagued with the need for too much certainty? And I wonder what that would look like. What would it look like for your life to be plagued with the need for too much certainty? Perhaps it would mean that you were uh, constantly worrying about the future, about what was going to happen next. Perhaps it would mean that you would be put off making a change or a move in your life because you didn't know for certain what was going to happen. Maybe it's put you off making an appointment to see a doctor or a dentist, Ooh, I can relate to that one, uh, because you don't know what they're going to find and that worries you. So how do we deal with this sort of thing? There's a, a really good reading in um, Exodus 33, where Moses is having a conversation with God. And the thing is, we've just had the incident where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and all the other laws, etc., that were to show the people of Israel how best to live their lives as the people of God. And Moses comes down from the mountain and finds that the people of Israel, meanwhile, have got bored and are um, worshipping a golden calf that they've made. Uh, they've, they've decided that that's the God that got them out of Egypt after all. And God is so furious. And he says to Moses, you know, take the people up to the land that I've shown you. Go on, take them up, but I'm not gonna go with you because if I did, I'd, I'd just get so furious, I'd just destroy them. And here we have Moses pleading with God. And this is what he says. It's in Moses, in Moses, in Exodus 33. Moses said to the Lord, see, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, that's God, my presence will go with you. 
and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. I love the fact that um, the Lord in his mercy and in his grace decided that after all, he would go with the people. He would be with Moses. He promised that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. He didn't promise that he wouldn't have any difficulties along the way, but he did promise that his presence would go with him. When you fast forward to the New Testament, to Philippians chapter four, it does give us a hint as to the comfort that we can gain from that as well. In chapter four, it says, verse four of chapter four in Philippians, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's a beautiful few verses. Oh, hi there. Hi. <laughs> Feel free. No, no, <laughs> Just give right. a little wave. <laughs> hi. hi. <laughs> Good job, this pathway is a little bit wider than I thought it was. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so these are lovely verses. And it also brings to mind something that I heard the other day um, at a leaders conference I was at. I was telling you, wasn't I, the other week, um, those of you who were in church about the um, Southern Counties Baptist Association Leaders Day. And um, there was a lady there who was leading it. She was really inspirational. And she has uh, founded uh, an organisation called Renew Wellbeing. Ruth Rice is her name. And she was talking about how that had come out of her actually having a breakdown, which was a complete surprise to her. And she was about a year before she could properly function again. And in the midst of all that, awful though it was, she said she found a way of being with God in a much deeper way than she had been before. And the thing that really struck me was she said, I can't promise you that you, you won't have a breakdown or some other illness or anything like that. She said, but I can promise you that you will find God there. And for me, that just tied this all up. We don't need to know exactly what is going to happen to us as if we were the Sandbanks Ferry Bramblebush Bay, <laughs> knowing that she has to go from here to there and knowing that because she's tied by the chain. We don't need that sort of certainty of knowing exactly what's going to happen to us or exactly where we're going or exactly how ill we're going to be or what's going to happen if we do get ill. It is good to make plans if we can, as far as we can, but at the end of the day, no matter what happens, God says that his presence is with us. And surely that is the most important thing. That's something that I have to remind myself as well, because again, we none of us really likes uncertainty, I guess. I mean, it can be exciting, don't get me wrong, but um, at the same time, it can give you a sense of adventure, but at the same time, sometimes you just think, oh, if I only knew what was going to happen next. Well, sometimes I think it's God's grace that we don't know what's going to happen next. But we can take comfort and take courage from these words that we have heard that actually Moses was content to think, yeah, now I can go forwards. I can lead these people. Let's face it, they weren't the easiest bunch, the Israelites, were they? I can lead these people to the promised land now because God's presence will go with me. So whatever we will have to face in the future, we may, unlike this ferry, we may be blown like a sailboard sailboard sailboat you can tell i'm not very nautical can't you blown but like a sailboat on the winds of the holy spirit to places that we we don't know about yet to situations that we don't know about yet 
but as long as God's presence goes with us, we have nothing to fear. It'll be all right. So those are the words that I wanted to comfort you with today. I hope it helps. Um, do you know what? Let's pray together. Oh Lord, I want to thank you for this place. It's just so beautiful to be able to look out. As ever, we quite often say this, Lord, looking out on your creation. But Lord, we thank you too that if we ask you, you will make your ways known to us. And even though we don't always know the answers, Lord, sometimes like that quotation said, we quite often just have to sit with the questions and the possibilities. And that is sometimes the hardest thing, Lord. But that's where our faith comes in. And that's where we have to trust in you. And so Lord, strengthen our faith, strengthen our trust in you. We ask all of this in your precious name. Amen. But anyway, listen, I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a good week. All right then, God bless. Bye for now.